Looking through the axioms of the real numbers, we notice that while we can see that everything in the list of axioms is true, it's not at all an exhaustive list of everything we know about the real numbers. Certainly we know a lot more about the real numbers than just what's listed in the axioms. But the axioms are the only properties of the real numbers that are true by definition. They're the only ones that we can take for granted. Everything else that we know about the real numbers, we will have to prove. To get started, we're going to look at a very simple property of the real numbers. It's the property that when you multiply any real number by zero, the result is going to be zero. Now this may sound like a trivial property of the real numbers, but it may end up being a little bit difficult to prove. The reason this might be difficult to prove is that since it's our first proposition, we have very little to work with. All we have is the definition of the real numbers because we haven't proven anything else yet. And so the only tools available to us are the axioms of the real numbers. Still, this property should be a pretty good place to start. To begin, if we look at the proposition, we'll notice it's a general proposition. It refers to a property that all real numbers have. You can see this because of the fact that it starts with this universal quantifier saying for all x in the real numbers, x has this property that when you multiply it by zero, the result is zero. Since we're trying to prove this property is true for all real numbers, it's not enough just to show examples like 1 times 0 is 0 or 2 times 0 is 0. We have to show that this is going to be true in general, no matter what real number we're using. And to prove general propositions like this, we need to use our first rule of logic, which is something called universal generalization. Universal generalization works like this. If we're trying to prove any statement with a universal quantifier, so anything that has the form for all x in some universe of discourse, then some statement about x, what we need to do is introduce an arbitrary sort of abstract constant into our proof. In this case, because we're trying to prove something about all real numbers, we're going to introduce an arbitrary abstract real number into our proof. And we can give this real number any name we want. Um, for example, we, we could call it x, or we could call it a, or really anything you want to use. So we start with a statement that says something like, let x be a real number. And the point is, the only thing we know about x is that it's a real number. And if we're able to prove that our statement is true for this general abstract constant x, knowing only that it's a real number, then that will mean that our proof is valid no matter what the value of x is, which means it will be valid for all real numbers. And so universal generalization works like this. We introduce our arbitrary nonspecific constant by saying let x belong to, in this case, the real numbers. And then we need to demonstrate that our statement is true for that arbitrary nonspecific x. And if we can successfully do that, then we are allowed to conclude that that statement is true for all values of x in, in this case, the real numbers. So going back to our proof, what we need to do is first introduce an arbitrary nonspecific constant. And we do this by making a statement, let x be an element of the real numbers. So this introduces this constant x into our proof that represents an arbitrary nonspecific real number. Now, if we are able to successfully demonstrate that our statement is true for this arbitrary constant x, in other words, if we're able to demonstrate that 0 times x is 0 and that x times 0 is 0, then the property of universal generalization allows us to make the conclusion that says, therefore, for all values of x in the real numbers, our statement is true. The obvious question now is, how do we demonstrate that for this arbitrary constant x, x times 0 is 0 and 0 times x is 0? To do that, we should get out some scrap paper. The next thing to notice is that this statement is really a statement about the number 0. We're talking about a property that the number 0 has. And so if we're looking for relevant axioms to use, we should just look at the axioms that have something to do with the number zero. So what are the axioms that tell us about the behavior of the number zero? And there is really only one of them. It's axiom A3, the one that says, if you add any number to zero, you get that number. Specifically, it says that for any value of x in the real numbers, x plus zero is x and zero plus x is x.
This, from the axioms of the real numbers, is the only thing that we know about zero. Next, we have to think about how we can apply this axiom. It's saying it's something that's true about all real numbers, but really our axioms don't tell us about the existence of very many real numbers. Our axioms say that zero is a real number and that one is a real number, and we can add to that the fact that we've introduced this arbitrary constant into our proof, the, the constant x. So really the only real numbers that we have in play are zero, one, and x. And since axiom A3 applies to every real number, it certainly applies to the three real numbers that we know about. So what we can get from axiom A3 is that 0 plus 0 is 0, 0 plus 1 is 1, and for our arbitrary constant x, 0 plus x is equal to x. And this is what we have to work with. The trouble here is that this axiom is talking about addition, whereas the statement that we're trying to prove is about multiplication. So what we really want to know is what happens if we multiply x by zero. Well, one thing we can do, since we have these statements from the axioms that tell us about the number zero, if we want to introduce multiplication by x, we can just multiply x on both sides of each of these equations. After multiplying x on both sides of these equations, we can apply the distributive law to distribute the multiplication over the addition. So we get x times 0 plus x times 0 is equal to x times 0. And we also get x times 0 plus x times 1 is equal to x times 1. And with our third equation, we get x times 0 plus x times x is equal to x times x. Now remember, where we're trying to get is a statement that says x times 0 is equal to 0. Now if we look at our first equation that says x times 0 plus x times 0 equals x times 0, notice that we have on both sides of the equation at least one of the terms x times 0. Similarly, in equation 2, we have the term x times 1 on both sides. And if we look at the third equation, we see that we have the repeated term x times x on both sides of the equation. Now you'll notice that if in any one of these equations we're able to eliminate from both sides that repeated term, then all we'll be left with is x times 0 on one side and 0 on the other side, which is exactly what we're looking for. Now we only need to do this once, so really we just need to choose one of these equations to work with. Let's just work with the first equation, x times 0 plus x times 0 equals x times 0. And so what we can do at this point is subtract x times 0 from both sides. Or in other words, we can add the negative of x times 0 to both sides. Because remember, our axioms tell us that every number, including the number x times 0, must have a negative. And so in doing this, we're able to cancel out 1x times 0 from both sides, and you'll notice that what's left is exactly what we're looking for. x times 0 is equal to 0. Now, we've done this using the first equation, which was the 0 plus 0 equals 0 equation. We could have used either of the other two. Um, the point is you really only need to use one of these. So now, returning to our proof, we figured out a way to demonstrate that our arbitrary constant x when multiplied by 0 is equal to 0. So all we need to do is display that demonstration. So if you remember, we start with the statement 0 plus 0 equals 0. That was from one of our axioms. And then to introduce multiplication by x, we multiply both sides of that equation by x. And then we're able to distribute the multiplication over addition to get x times 0 plus x times 0 equals x times 0. The next step was to cancel out one of the x times 0 terms from both sides. We do that by adding the negative of x times 0 to both sides. And notice that we need to regroup the brackets here. And we're able to do that because addition is associative. Remember, that's axiom A2, that we can shift the brackets when we're adding three things together. Next, we need to use the fact that any real number added to its negative is 0. That, remember, was axiom A4. And finally, we use the fact that 0 plus x times 0 will be x times 0, because 0 added to any real number returns that real number. That's axiom A3. And so here we have a successful demonstration of the fact that for our arbitrary constant x, x times 0 is equal to 0. And again, because of the universal generalization property, 
we are now able to conclude that this is true for all values of x in the real numbers. At this point, you'll notice that the conclusion we've reached is an exact restatement of the proposition that we were trying to prove, which means this proof is done. Now, to make sure this is done correctly, the next thing that we should do is check to see that every step in our demonstration is justifiable using only the axioms of the real numbers. Looking at the very first statement, 0 plus 0 equals 0, this is just an application of axiom A3, that 0 plus anything is itself. Next, we multiply x on both sides of the equation. Now, you might ask, what axiom allows us to multiply on both sides of an equation? And the answer to that is that it's not an axiom of the real numbers, but it is an axiom of binary operations. So remember, we talked about binary operations in the definition of the real numbers. And recall that there are two properties that define a binary operation. Looking at multiplication, the first property tells us that given any two real numbers, their product will also be a real number. So we know that x times 0 is a real number. And the second property says this. If you have real numbers x, y, a, and b, if x and y are the same and a and b are the same, then x times a will be the same as b times y. In other words, this is saying that if you put in the same inputs into multiplication, you will get the same output. Now, in our case, we have two equations. The first equation is simply that x is equal to x. And the second equation is the one that we're working with, which says that 0 plus 0 is equal to 0. So the way that we're going to apply this property of binary operations is we're going to view the x equals x equation as playing the role of the, the first equation in the property, x equals y. So in other words, x is playing the role of x, and x is also playing the role of y. Our second equation, 0 plus 0 equals 0, is going to play the role of our a equals b equation in the property of binary operations. And so, in other words, the expression 0 plus 0 is going to play the role of A, and the number 0 is going to play the role of B. And if we apply the property in this way, then the equation x times A equals y times B becomes the equation x times the expression 0 plus 0 is equal to x times the number 0. And the result is that we've essentially multiplied both sides of the 0 plus 0 equals 0 equation by the number x. And so essentially what this property of binary operations does is it allows us to take an equation and multiply whatever we want on both sides of that equation. Similarly, the same property for the addition binary operation would allow us to add whatever we want to both sides of an equation. Returning to our proof, we see that this line where we multiply both sides of the equation by x is justifiable just using the properties of a binary operation. We are allowed to multiply on both sides of an equation. The next step distributes x over the addition, and this is allowed because of the distributive law, which we called axiom dl. In the step after that, we add the negative of x times 0 to both sides of the equation. And again, you might ask, what axiom allows us to add something to both sides of the equation? And the answer is that because addition is a binary operation, we are allowed to add to both sides of an equation, just as we were allowed to multiply on both sides of an equation. The next step just involves shifting brackets. When you have three things added together, you can shift the brackets so that it doesn't matter which two you add first. That was axiom A2, the associative axiom for addition. The next step replaces negative x times 0 plus x times 0 with the number 0, and this is because any real number added to its negative returns 0, which is axiom A4. And finally, we are able to eliminate the zeros from the equation because of axiom A3, which says any real number plus 0 returns just that real number. And so going through step by step, we see that every step we've made is justifiable in terms of the defining axioms of the system that we're using. And so this is a successful demonstration. Of course, now that we've proven Proposition 1, we are now able to use Proposition 1 in any future proofs. And so if at any time throughout the course we need to use the fact that a real number times 0 is equal to 0, we can do that just by applying Proposition 1.